Hello, everybody. This is Alchemist Tool, and I'm back again with another book review. Ooh, ah! Uh, I hope to God Tony Abbott writes another book to this series. Although it does say that he is working on the Serpent's Curse, so alas, I have to wait. And it's too short. It's far too short. It's 410 pages long. Too short. Um, basically, this has a lot of different elements in it concerning Copernicus um, and Ptolemy and other astronomically themed elements, which me loving the stars and all things <laughs> involved in them. I just, I was drawn to this book like a moth to a flame. And uh, once I picked it up, I could not put it down. It was that good. And it's it's marketed toward ages 8 to 12. And uh, you learn quite a bit, actually, through going through this. And the Teutonic Knights are also involved with this. And I, th I think that the Teutonic Knights are still in order. Uh, I don't know if they are still... Uh, a viable order, or if they're even still in existence. Uh, the book suggests that they are, but I don't know if this is true or not. There's a lot of historical um, creativity um, license going on here. Um, I love this book. I, it's shrouded with mystery, and there's treasure, and it's got this whole Indiana Jones flair to it, which I absolutely love because I'm, I'm a absolute mega fan of Indiana Jones, anything archaeological, going to ruins, I think, would be fascinating. Um, that's why I, I want to travel, just because I got gypsy feet. Um, <clears throat> you've got the two half-brothers in the beginning. You've got Wade and, and Daryl, and, and Wade is a super smart one, and uh, his mother is a single mom now, and she... Um, She's not only a single mother, I shouldn't say that. She's married to Roald, and Roald is um, involved in something that he can't really talk about right away with his boys. But uh, uh, Incidentally, the whole family gets involved in this uh, globetrotting quest for uh, basically... Well, I won't say what it is. If I do, it'll be a huge plot spoiler. I'm not going to do that. This This book is absolutely amazing. It really is. It's phenomenal. It is just non-stop adrenaline rush. And uh, when I picked it up, I just I just could stop reading. And I, I kept thinking, what's going to happen to Wade? What's going to happen to Daryl? What's going to happen to Becca and all these other characters that I've come to like so much? And Whatever happened to Heinrich, and we learn what happened to Heinrich. It's actually quite sad what happens to Heinrich. They call him Uncle Henry. Hun uncle Henry sounds like a really awesome person. Uh, I would love to have him as an uncle. Actually, I think I have kind of an um, an Uncle Heinrich in a way with my my Zio Giovanni. His, he was born in Genoa, and he lived through World War II and actually saw uh, Mussolini and Clara Batacci hung on the on that petrol station. He was there. Woo, gives me woo, woo, I get prickly pears whenever I hear about that and think about it. But um uh. I really don't know what else to say about this book other than it's too darn short. And uh, I like the illustrations in it, though. First, I see at the very beginning of the leaflet. There's the star chart. The star chart is very important. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, let's see. Forbidden Stone. I'm going to show you the very first illustration of the uh, telescope here. I'm actually going to read a little bit. <clears throat> Chapter 1. Austin, Texas, March 8, 1147 p.m. How and why, and precisely when, Wade Kaplan dreamed that his priceless char chart had burst into flame, he didn't know. But the instant its swirls of silver ink and richly painted constellations caught fire, he bolted awake. No! 
The room was pitch black. There was no fire. Knowing the door between his room and his stepbrother Dale's room was open, he tilted his head toward it. Slow, rhythmic breathing. Okay. Good. Their first official day of school vacation had hardly been restful. Rushing around last minute, doing last minute chores before his stepmom, Sarah, flew off on a business trip to South America. Her flight would leave early in the morning, and despite her hectic day, he and Daryl had promised to be up at the crack of dawn to see her off. And yet, Wade pushed the sheets aside, walked to the window, and quietly raised the shade. It was a nearly moonless night, and the stars were sprinkled thickly across the velvety black. His house in the hills, some far away from the Austin city, lit its city lights, usually meant a vivid night sky, and tonight was no exception. Turning to his desk, he opened the small top drawer and drew out a leather satchel the size of a large paperback. Not only had it been, not been burned, but it was cool to the touch, and he realized it had been weeks since he had last handled it. He undid its straps and removed its thick sheet of unfolded parchment. His skin tingled as he opened it. The map was a gift for his 17th birthday from a dear friend of his father's, a man he had come to know as Uncle Henry. Engraved and hand-painted in the early 16th century, the map was a work of science, art, and history combined, and he cherished it. Why then, he had just, why then had he just dreamed of his destruction? Wade turned the star map around until it matched the arrangement of the constellations outside his window. Then, as if he had waited for him to simply look up, a meteor slid slowly across the dark sparkling as it passed. Daryl, look, he said instinctively, waiting for a second streak of light, knowing that one never comes when you expect it. A slow minute went by. No, that was all. He traced his finger across the map, right across to Draco and Cygnus. The bad kids from Harry Potter? Wade spun around. Daryl, did you see it? His stepbrother, st his stepbrother staggled, staggered over, rubbing his eyes. The sky? Yeah, I saw it yesterday, too. What time is it? Is the world ending? Answer the second question first. Wade laughed. About midnight. I just saw the meteor. I think they're actually much more common than people think. And yet here we stand, staring out your window. Mom's trip comes in like an hour, doesn't it? I know. Sorry. Wade had known since he was a toddler that stars were en energy producing balls of fiery gas burning in incredible heat m hundreds of miles, hundreds of millions of miles away. That's hard to say. Since his first years in school, actually Wade sounds a lot like me. Um, since his first years in school, science had been his thing, his strength. But spread out over the Texas skies, or anywhere really, stars were also something else. Not merely randomly positioned streaks, specks blinking in darkness. Daryl, look! Wade said, pointing to the chart in the sky. That's Cephas. See, it's a kind of box that's pointed with a pointed hat on top. And there's one of Pegasus's. Light. Stars are like, I don't know, messages from way out there for us to us down here. If only we could read the code, you know? Daryl squinted. I don't really see them, but I believe you. Which is the part of the stepbrother code. I also believe I really need to sleep or I'll die. <laughs> he stood back to his room. Uncle Henry wrote me once, The sky is where mathematics and magic become one. Isn't that so cool? I'm becoming one with my bed. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll go back to the campus observatory, White said. You'll have to see it. It's already tomorrow, and I'm already asleep, Daryl said. Then he turned from the doorway. But seriously, bro, very cool. I get it. In, in three strides, he was on his bed, where he snorted exaggeratedly, went quiet, and was amazingly asleep. Wade watched a minute longer and then drew the shade down. He folded the celestial chart and carefully returned it to his desk drawer, where math and magic become one. Wade felt that, too. He felt it like he felt his own heartbeat. Since the, since the beginning of time, people had read, the whole, had read whole stories in the sky, finding the past, present, and future, and seeming the arrangement of star to star to star. And he thought of the kind of old man who had given him the priceless chart six years before. He smiled. Thanks again, Uncle Henry. Crawling back into bed, Wade felt strangely calm. He had no idea that in the coming days, he and Daryl, too, would measure their lives as a happening before or after the starry night. Let the reading commence. <laughs>